In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the feast of November 22nd of St. Cecilia. St. Cecilia is the patroness of musicians. She is said to have played numerous musical instruments and to love to sing. And we have, of course, this parable of the Gospel of the Five Foolish Virgins and the Five Wise Virgins. They're all invited to the wedding feast. The five wise are prudent virgins. They hold their oil. They don't burn it during the night because they expect the bridegroom to come, the call to come in for the wedding feast, and they will be ready with their lamps burning because they didn't burn out all their oil. But the five foolish ones, they did burn out their oil. They kept them burning all through the night. And when the wedding, the bridegroom did come and the wedding was ready, they were caught empty-handed. And they were excluded from the wedding feast. And they knocked at the door saying, let us in. We went and bought some more oil. And the porter says to them, I know you not. So our Lord warns us, he says, he finishes it saying, Watch therefore, for you know not the day or the hour. Be watchful. So what does this mean? St. Gregory the Great puts it very simply, the foolish virgins are those who lose the state of grace. They burn their oil. They don't practice virtue. They don't focus on living according to God's law and keeping his commandments. They burn the oil, that is, they enjoy all the pleasures of this world and break the commandments, <coughs> living in mortal sin. They're Catholic. They mean well because they want to go to the wedding and, the, and they're invited to the wedding feast, just like all of us are invited to the wedding feast of heaven. But many will be excluded because they did not die in the state of grace. And that's what happened to these five foolish virgins. They, didn't, they weren't caught in the night. That is the surprise of death. They were not caught in the state of grace. They were empty. Their vessels were empty of the oil of sanctifying grace that burns with the light and fire of the Holy Ghost in the soul. So they're caught empty-handed, and they're, they come to the gates of heaven, and our Lord says, I know you not. And God the Father looks into their soul, and he looks for the reflection, the image of his divine Son by sanctifying grace, and says, I don't, I don't see my Son. I don't see the Blessed Trinity reflected in your soul by participating in my life by sanctifying grace. I know you not. Go where you choose to go to the eternal fires of hell. But the five prudent virgins, who are these? These are souls of the Catholic Church who save their oil, so to speak. They don't waste it all on the pleasures of this earth. They say no to the allurements of this world, to the pleasures of the flesh, such as fornication, adultery, impurity, and drunkenness, and revelings, as St. Paul lists the works of darkness. They don't do this. They say no to all these temptations and the immodest fashions for girls. And the, these, these prudent virgins, they say no to the devil and his allurements and to the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world, which today could be defined as the contraceptive mentality to stop children, to limit children in marriage, and to calculate very carefully. We will only have two or three and no more. Five dogs, but only three children. And calculating with God, this cold, miserly attitude towards God. While we know that marriage is a beautiful vocation, and it is to pick up the cross and follow our Lord, and one of those crosses is to take the children that God sends. 
and you will always provide for them. We see this miracle happening all over the world. Large families who somehow they get a raise, somehow they get an inheritance, somehow God provides. And he's a loving father and will not abandon those who trust in him. But those who calculate their fruit, God will look at their fruit of their tree and say, where is the fruit? And he, remember how he cursed the fig tree. So it is, these five prudent virgins, they don't waste their affections, their love, their <coughs> strength and energies on the emptiness of this world. They keep the life of grace. That is, they preserve their oil. They know what's the priority is to get to heaven and escape the fires of hell and burn with the love of God. So they keep the oil of sanctifying grace. They put that as a priority to keep the commandments. And so when the wedding bridegroom comes, they can ignite the fire of the charity of the sanctifying grace by the vision of the Blessed Trinity in heaven. And they are invited and brought in for the wedding feast. Such it is in the Catholic Church, which outside of which there's no salvation, even within the Catholic Church, there are those lost because they will not obey with their heart and whole being the commandments of God. So they are caught sometimes in death without sanctifying grace, without time of repentance. And that's why the Litany of the Saints asks, Lord, from a sudden and unprovided death, deliver us. So let's look at this prudent virgin, Saint Cecilia. Here's what the Roman breviary says about her. St. Cecilia, a Roman maiden, born of a noble family, brought up from infancy in the teachings of, Christian, of the Christian faith, and she lived in the 200s. She vowed her virginity to God. Married against her, her will to Valerian, on her nuptial night she said to him, Valerian, I am under the care of an angel who is guardian of my virginity. Do not do, therefore, anything that may arouse the anger of God against you. Now, Cecilia made it very clear. I have consecrated my life to God. I have consecrated my virginity to Christ. I cannot marry. And her parents arranged this marriage. And she told Valerian, her forced upon um, possible marriage, she says, don't, don't do anything because I belong to God. And if you do, watch. So Valerian was disturbed by these words and did not dare touch her. He even declared that he would believe in Christ if he could send the angel. When St. Cecilia explained that this was impossible without baptism, Valerian desired so ardently to see the angel that he offered to be baptized. Acting on St. Cecilia's advice, he went to Pope Urban, uh, who, because of the persecution, was at that time in hiding in the catacomb of the martyrs out on the Appian Way, and there Pope Urban baptized him. So he had to go find the Pope in the catacombs, way down under the ground in these beautiful catacombs of Rome, where so many martyrs were buried and so many masses were said. So now Valerian is a Catholic, and when Valerian returned to St. Cecilia, he found her at prayer, and beside her was an angel shining in divine splendor. He was overcome at that sight. As soon as he recovered from his awe-inspired fright, Valerian summoned his brother Tiburtius. He too was instructed by St. Cecilia in the faith of Christ, and after baptism by Pope Urban, saw the same angel his brother had seen. Shortly afterwards, both brothers bravely suffered martyrdom at the hands of the prefect Almachius, who also ordered the arrest of St. Cecilia. Almachius questioned her first about the disposal of the property of Tiburtius and Valerian. When St. Cecilia replied that all their wealth had been distributed to the poor, 
Almachius, the prefect, flew into a rage. He ordered her to be taken home to her own house to be put to death by the heat of the bath. So remember the Roman baths, St. Cecilia was a noble family, so they had a very beautiful marble home, and they would burn fire uh, underneath to heat the pipes that would go to the baths. So they would basically cook her to death. For a day and a night, she remained unharmed by its fiery breath. Then an executioner was sent for her, <coughs> although he struck three blows with an axe. He was unable to sever her head, so he left her half dead. She lingered three days alive. Then on September 16th, in the reign of the Emperor Alexander, crowned with the dual palm of virginity and martyrdom, St. Cecilia took her flight to heaven. The same pontiff, Pope Urban, buried her body in the cemetery of St. Calixtus. A church was set up in her house, and ded dedicated under the name of St. Cecilia. Her body and those of Popes Urban and Lucius, and of Tiburtius and Valerian, and Maximus, were brought back into the city by Pope Paschal I, and were buried together in the church of St. Cecilia. So there, St. Cecilia was buried for many hundreds of years. Her body was in the catacombs. And if you go there in Rome, you can see the, the burial place where the body of St. Cecilia was found. Some excavators were pounding away at the dirt, and they found this cavity inside behind the wall and they cleared out the dirt and they found the incorrupt body of saint cecilia her body was still supple they could still see her face she was beautiful and young and the blood even on her neck from the axe um, the axe uh, cuts was still fresh blood and her fingers were so arranged that she had one finger and two out. So she was professing, even in her death, Christ is one person, but two natures. He's the person of God, but two natures. And for this, St. Cecilia was killed, to profess Christ as God. Archbishop Lefebvre said, this is why we say no to Vatican II. He said, this is why we oppose the council errors. This is why we should not be worried if they level suspensions, excommunications, to try to crush out tradition. He said, it's all because we profess the divinity of Christ and they attack it. And one of the first effects of his being God is his kingship, the, the divine kingship of Jesus Christ, which the Vatican II has deliberately uncrowned him. So this defines the battle of traditional Catholics today against modern liberalism, against Vatican II, the New Mass, and the whole onslaught against the Catholic faith. So let's pray to St. Cecilia to sing with joyful hearts, to sing in our hearts to God, says St. Paul. Sing good hymns, the Psalms, the hymns of the Church. Memorize some by heart. And in the religious life, we they're singing all the time. Prime, Sextus, Compline, and in, in the monastic orders, they sing the whole divine office. Everything is sung. The bride of Christ sings to her spouse. So let's pray to the Saint Cecilia not to burn out our, our affections and our talents on sins in this world and be caught knocking at the door and hear from inside, I know you not. But let's storm heaven now. Use your talents and gifts. Use the little time that we have on this earth to obtain heaven. And with the threat of a nuclear war, our death could be very soon. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? The whole world now is walking on eggshells, and God perhaps has given us, all of us, this chance now to straighten out everything with God, because one nuclear bomb will wipe out the whole island of England. There'll be not much left.
maybe some some trees in Wales, some hills in Scotland, but that's about it. So, and in the United States, the United States is provoking this war, um, and, and it's sad to say, and we know who's behind it, the synagogue of Satan, but, and they want their war. They want the reign of their antichrist. They want a one world government, a one world religion, a one world economy to prepare for their, their fake messiah, which will be the antichrist. This is their goal. But Our Lady is going to thwart their efforts because she has plans, something much greater, which is the triumph of her immaculate heart. So let's pray to St. Cecilia to be joyful in this battle and faithful and to spend all our energies and talents to gain heaven and not to lose this treasure. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray, pray for us in every course of O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us in every O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us in every course of And for those who do not have recourse to thee especially, all communists and Freemasons, and other enemies of Holy Mother Church, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.